Hey, hey everyone. What's this big mess here on my desk? Can you guess what we might be doing with this today? Well, you know how we like to make those snippet rolls in, in the junk journal community? We use strips of fabric and we affix little pieces and snippets of lace and fabric and stuff. I have one here that I did probably two or three years ago and I just went back and added the lace bits on top. I folded it in half, so I'm just showing you half at a time. But I just went back in last week and added all these little pieces because it just looked kind of blah. I didn't know what was wrong with it. So I added more to it and I think it's definitely looking better. Then I'll go in and add some buttons and maybe a charm or two or something. Well, I've been going through my um, bin, my little suitcase full of different snippet scraps. And like I had mentioned last week, I've been cleaning out all my fabric scraps and making fabric flips and different things. So I thought when I ran across some of these handkerchiefs, I've got a couple of these vintage hankies that I found at an estate sale last year. And some of them I would actually use in projects, but there are a couple of them like this that are just not really that interesting. So I thought, what if we used one of these as the base and made a snippet square instead? And then they could be cut apart into clusters or maybe a belly band size or anything like that. And since I'm trying to focus on things for autumn journals coming up, I've got this big pile of autumn journal stuff. <laughs> Lots of autumn themed snippets. So what we're going to do today is affix them to this handkerchief and see if we can make something pretty that we can use in autumn journals. So go ahead and grab your stuff, and get yourself comfy, meet me right back here and we will get started. Okay, so there are several ways that people do these, especially when they're in the long strip. And one way is to just sew down the edges and down the center. Another way that people do is that they kind of crazy sew after they've stuck all the bits and pieces on here. They kind of do like a crazy stitch all through just to tack everything down. And that is what I am thinking of doing today. So I got my fabric. I'm trying to get all these little fuzzies off, although I suppose it doesn't really matter because I'm about to cover it with fabric, right? So that, that's my thought for today. I've got my fabric tack just to kind of dot or maybe that, yeah, that's fabric tack today, uh, just to dot in places. And then what I don't get done, we could add to the snippet roll, this particular piece and some of these pieces I ordered from somebody online, but it's been long enough ago that I don't honestly remember who I ordered it from, but I really liked this piece that she intended to be used as the base. And I thought that would be really pretty added to a snippet roll. So I just have never put anything on it. Oh, you, some of these may look pretty familiar to you. I should maybe get out my pins. That might be a good idea. Sometimes it's helpful just to pin everything as you're looking at it before you tack it down. And then I won't sew on camera because my camera is mounted to the table and the sewing machine just makes it too shaky. So what I want to start out by doing is putting down some of these bigger bits underneath and then layering some of the smaller ones on top. I could cut these down. Now some people when they do their snippet rolls they do nice neat little squares, you know, nice pieces that are all neat and trimmed up and then they lay those across their snippet roll. Other people like to tear their fabrics into strips and just lay them down in strips. There's just so many ways that you can go about it. I tend to be a fan of the haphazard look, so <laughs> that's what I do. And I thought if I took some of these bigger ones and laid them down on the back and then just laid some of the smaller pieces over the top, that might give us a really nice, a real nice look. I was just out on the patio for lunch and I like to do that right now. I go out for a little bit, about halfway through. Sometimes I fall asleep out there for a few minutes. It's so darned hot, I can't, I can't stay for very long, but um, I do enjoy sitting in the shady spot as long as it will last. But today, 
there was a yellow jacket. He kept trying to dive bomb me. I didn't really have food. I did it first, then I ran away and went inside to finish my food. And then I went back out to watch a video and just kind of relax, but he kept coming after me. <laughs> so that gets annoying. We do have a trap up, but there's always one or two by the end of the summer. Where'd that just go? Uh oh, oh, there it is. Always one or two by the end of the summer that that have escaped the trap that are flying around. So I'm gonna have to go empty it and put in a new new cartridge with the attractant in it. It's just, I need to get out there and hose off the patio and hose down the furniture and get the cobwebs off the house. I just get tired of it. This time of year, the everything is just kind of dusty looking especially with all the construction that's been going on over the last few years in our area. Actually, out of the 13 year, 15 years we've lived here, I would say 13 of them have had construction. So there's always dust being stirred up, and it's not going to end anytime soon. There's a new sporting goods store that's supposed to go in about a half mile away from here. It's called Shields, I believe, S-C-H. E-E-L or something. I don't know. I used to work with uh, Sandy Sheely. She was our <laughs> principal at the elementary school I first worked at, so it's spelled very similarly, so I, I keep spelling her name instead of the actual name. But anyway, it's a big sporting goods store in the Midwest, and it wants to expand into Idaho. And from what I understand, it's going to have a giant Ferris wheel inside. I thought, well, that's great. So when I'm really bored, I can just walk over to the sporting goods store and um, take a Ferris wheel ride. <laughs> Who would have thought that? Not me. I didn't know that was a thing. Didn't know that was something you could do. Anyway, it's kind of funny. I might do more than one of these. These are, I got a lot of pieces here. Let's see how many. Those guys could go together. Now, this is a very similar technique to making quilted pockets. If you ever make the quilted pockets to put in your journals, it's very similar to that. I'm gonna have to scoot, scoot that down maybe. There's a, there's a gap right here. And that's not quite covering it. So there we go, everybody meets at those points right there. Yeah, so the construction dust is going to continue to be a reality, but boy, it just gets old having it all over the furniture outside and my windows outside. I need to clean windows. I need to, um, yeah, just do a lot of things, but I'm trying to get ahead on my videoing and then I've been working on some other stuff and I've been trying to get things cleaned out of my shop. I've been working on other home projects. One of which is to revamp revamp my menu plans. I Long ago when we first got married, I found it somewhat beneficial to sit down and write out menu plans. I just had kind of a general template and then I could write on there breakfast, lunch, dinner. And those have been a continually evolving project throughout most of my married life. <laughs> They're always changing. The recipes change, your tastes change, or you might try, you know, like now there's more Weight Watchers recipes on it. And But I've gotten away from that the last couple of years, last few years, because at one point, my youngest daughter had to be dairy free. My oldest daughter developed IBS, which we believe was the aftermath of gallbladder surgery. So she developed that, and then daughter number two started dating a nice young man who had to be gluten-free. So pretty much all the menus had to be, all the recipes had to be adapted. And cooking became a chore. Plus my feet really hurt at that time. I had injured one of my feet on the beach, and it just hurt so badly to just stand up in the kitchen and make dinner every night. So. Anyway, over time, I kind of got away from the menu plans, but now I'm recommitted to 
to getting back in it and it's just nice to not have to think about what to make for dinner and I've pretty much gotten rid of every recipe that I said I would try but haven't in the last umpteen years <laughs> and every um, every one that we have tried that was a dud we didn't really like it so I've gotten rid of all of those I've just tried to I mean I know pretty much now what I am and am not gonna make and I just I don't like things that are super involved uh oh he missed he he shifted he's not pinned down that's why I don't like recipes that take a long time or are complicated I want them to taste good be reasonably healthy be reasonably economical and not take forever to make so so yeah <laughs> my needs are small yeah, that's kind of, I'm going to unpin this. I think I want that to scoot over. It might have been better if I would used like some kind of glue stick or something, but right at the moment, I just want to get the idea and tack it down with the pins just to see, whoop, just to see where we're at. And I hope you guys cannot hear my fan in the background. It gets hot in here in the afternoons with the door shut. So I have it on low, but. You might still hear it, so hopefully it's not too loud. I've had it on the last few times I've recorded. I just forgot to say that. Forgot to mention that. So now I could go around and just sew around each piece and tack down the edges, you know, and that's a cute look too, but I don't think I'm gonna. A lot of these are just scraps that have eventually been cut down from other projects. Ooh, that one just fits right there. Actually, let's go with him. He's a little bit longer and not quite as wide, but it's longer. Okay. I'm trying to stay in frame. I think I want to scoot up a bit so that you can see better. Boy, I got way more pieces here than this handkerchief. <laughs> handkerchief is going to do. Optimistic. That's me, all right always overestimating what I can do or can't do in a given amount of time or space. I like this pink, this pink, that dusty rose. Maybe I should put this down here to tie it in a little bit better. Or right here. Let's put it there. Over and over again, it is just so fun to see how all the pieces just work together without trying for some reason, this has round edges. I don't know why. I don't know what I was doing with that, but. That way, this old handkerchief is getting used up. It's got some holes in the back. It's kind of discolored. I don't know who the W was that was that had his name, his initial on there. I mean, I assume this was a man's hanky. I can't imagine this being a female hanky, but. You know, it just needed, it could have just gone in the trash, truthfully, but it makes a really nice base for this. Let's see. Hmm. I love these, this material right here. That is one of my most favorite pieces. Let's put it, that's too much tan with tan, isn't it? Hmm. Well, it might just have to be. I really like it. And it fits right there. Actually, let's put it right here. Now I got tan, tan, tan. But I thought if I put this up here, then maybe that would help. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, so I also got dinner squared away while I was on my lunch break. Here, that'll break up some of that tan togetherness. Tan togetherness, yeah. And since that does not have square corners, I'm going to keep that covered up. This is going to be interesting to sew, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> not that I usually do, but 
This is tan again. Let's save you for another one. Oh yes. I like I like this. This one's not white enough though. That is virtually oh here, this one could go up here though. I'm going to trim that. This was from some fabric I found at the thrift store, and so they had already done a project, so it's got the surging on the edge. I used to use my mom's serger way back. She still has it too. And I I should try to remember how that thing operates because it was really handy. Is that? I want it to cover all the brown. It's not gonna. Let's see here. I wonder if I have a little bit bigger one. Let's see. Got this quilted piece. That's nice, isn't it? I just threw a whole bunch of stuff in this in this pile, probably a bajillion more than I will ever use. A bajillion, that's a lot. <laughs> then we just have all these other little pieces that we have to embellish with. So as I'm going through here, I'm gonna just throw them in their own pile. There's all these laces and trims. These are all things that have been cut off of other projects. So I just went through and and um, separated everything out by color. That is the letter L. Today's episode has been brought to you by the letter L. It's a piece of ribbon. Let's see. Move these guys out of the way. Sorry, it's, it's, it's I can't help it. I have to sort because the mess is overwhelming, so. Sorting helps me see what's there. I love those, love doing that. But I'm really wanting a bigger piece of that and there may not be one. Oh, no, smaller, <laughs> smaller pieces of that. Well, fooey. Well, I wonder if I can rearrange how the green, or maybe I maybe I'd do better with a different piece of green. There's a piece of green. That one just might have to wait. Let's see. I'll just keep throwing these guys up there in that pile. This is a piece of a ruffle. Cut off from a ruffle I made. Wow, lots of little pieces here. I did order a pack uh, recently because I just wanted to see how she did her thing. It was reasonably priced and it just said it was snippets. Um, I have uh, some packs of snippet bundles that I've put in the shop because I just thought, well, I have all these pieces and, you know, more than I will ever use, but really a lot more than I'm just kind of tired of looking at them. <laughs> so I just took all, all the pieces and Put them into snippet packs but I was doing a little bit of opposition research to see opposition research just to see if you know how she did hers and how she was shipping it because she had a really amazing price on her shipping which was free but I just wanted to see how she was mailing it to do that and somehow she did mail it for like a buck 92 I don't know how she did that because I wasn't how it is through the Etsy system. It's more than that. So I was trying to figure out if I could do that or not, but anyway, so she sent a few pieces, but her snippets are all pieces that are irregular shaped. And I went through and cut mine into nice, nice pieces. So they're squares and stuff. Let's see this, ooh, yeah. I'm going to take that one off of there. Because I think I want this one there instead. All these little fuzzies. Ugh. Okay. 
if I put that over the edge, oh, I could do it this way and hide the selvage under here. Maybe, maybe, maybe I can. It's got a little apple on it. Well, you know what, that's fine because once, once I, um, you know, put the other layer on top, it will, it will cover that up. Trying to craft and talk is just not my, <laughs> not very easy for me. Okay, so, boy, there's just a ton. I have this leaf. It's the last one that I have from a pack of leaves, and I used them on some journal covers a couple years ago. And I'm wondering if I can use it somehow. I hope so. I really like it. It's very cool. They're appliques, pre-done appliques. Okay, stop sorting and start sewing. Good advice, good advice. See, like, here's one of her pieces that came in her pack. Some of these laces were in her pack too. I just went through it and divided them up into my little groups of what I'm making, but um, a lot of them were just like, like this, you know, just kinda clipped. So anyway, did my opposition research and just trying to see what everybody else is doing and hoping that if I put them in my shop, they'll, they'll go, so. <laughs> Anyway, but they are, they're great for these kinds of projects, like this. So, okay, let's start dabbing some glue, and then I can take all these pins out. There's that. There's that. I'll try to go through this very quickly.
Okay, we got those tacked down. Hope you didn't mind the little speeding up there. Is there anywhere that needs like a little, ooh, almost got my head in the camera. Needs a little bit um, more of something. Like this is a really long straight piece. So we could do that. So it's kind of like, you know, you can do the same thing with paper as you do with fabric. So just pretend like this is paper and maybe washi tape or, or other things, you know? You could do the same thing. It's similar to that Franken paper kind of idea or just collage. I mean, it's just collage with, collage with fabric, All right? Okay, so let's start throwing some pieces on here and see see what we think. And I don't want to start with him because he's too hard. <laughs> I have some of these teeny tiny little, um, what do you call them? Gosh, I went blank. Uh, Yo-yos. I just want to see if there's any other things in there I should be paying attention to. Okay. So now, oh, it's going to drip. It's going to drip. Let's put it on something <laughs> quick. I hope that's the right side. No, this is the wrong side. This is the back side. The back side is the wrong side. And the top side that's supposed to show is your right side for any of you who are wondering about that. And I got wet fingers now, so things are sticking to me. That's, that's what it, if you don't sew, that's what we mean when we say right side, wrong side. Um, I don't know. I like that this picks up this color. Maybe I should put them right there. See, some of these have a little bit of staining on them because of wherever they were. A lot of this came from the thrift store. Well, all of them did. Yeah, these all came from the thrift store at one point or time. Let's put you there. Here's a nice piece. Let go. There we go. So every time I had just a little bit of leftover, I threw it in a big tin and just kind of collected it so that I could do this. And even with all of that, because I've been doing that for a while, I still don't have a lot of lace and things to put to put down. I'm just going fast. I'm not really giving it too much thought. Thank goodness, right? <laughs> Thank goodness for that. It's kind of fun to work fast when you can. I want to scoot that off the edge a bit because it's torn up over there. Okay, and I, I, you might have noticed I was rotating during the decorating because that way I can get a good look at, look at it. Boy, are my hands messy. Gross. That, that wet wipe did nothing. <laughs> Got more thread sticking to me. Ah! I don't like it. I do not like the feel of things being stuck on my fingers. Like, you know, like when you have a Band-Aid and you can't feel anything. It seems like these Fabri-Tac or these Beacon glues really are bad about that. Like, go with me. They get on you worse than some other things. I got threads hanging off my fingers and I would like them to stop. Okay, what else we got? What else we got? We got this pretty green that doesn't really show up there. I like this green. This came off of Easter dress. Was it Easter or was it a bridesmaid's dress? A flower girl dress, I mean. Might have been a flower girl dress. Something came off of something that I changed it around and took the bows off because I didn't like them. But then I saved the bows because... The ribbon was pretty, and I have used up this pretty ribbon in quite a number of projects over the years. Now I'm trying to remember, it must have been in one of Camille's dresses, because she would be the most recent one that I would have remembered to save ribbon for. Or maybe it was for, maybe it was for Katie's wedding, number one daughter, and I took the ribbons off because of the flower girls who were our nieces. Our nieces were the flower girls, my nieces, her cousins. 
And I took off the green ribbon because it clashed. But we liked the dresses. That was it. They were Easter dresses. Ooh, that's cute. Oops. What if I turn it the other way? Would that be better? Might be. Oh, that's really pretty. That's a strip from the Opposition Recon pack. <laughs> I can't remember. It, her name, something vintage snippets or vintage fabrics or something. So theoretically, all of her fabric pieces are from vintage fabrics. And actually, a couple of them were pieces I had already. Same, same stuff that I had ordered from other people with their vintage fabric packs. So that was kind of fun. Where are we gonna put this little guy? Nope. Nope. Maybe. Did I go that way yet? I did. How about covering that little corner right there? There's a lot going on. He's got a fold here, which is meant to get sewn into a seam. So I'm gonna hide it under this piece of lace as if we were sewing it in. There we go, that works. Nice, okay, what else we got? We got this blue, but it doesn't go with any of these blues. Got some of this for my daughter's dress. Ooh, I have this stuff that's from a book. Kind of not the right thickness, but this, this would work. Right side, wrong side. Okay. So I'm gonna have to sew this pretty quickly and then we can see what we've got first. So let's see, what else? What else can we do here? This is pretty. This is off of one of my number two daughter's dresses. She used to wear so many lace things, so as they got holes or makeup stains or what have you, I saved all the lace, because by then I was into the whole junk journaling thing. These are mostly outfits from high school. That's pretty, isn't it? So she had, you know, they, she, they just make cuter stuff. <laughs> for teen girls. Not making this on any clothes I see. The weird thing is we just don't have, over time, I don't know, we just, our clothing options have really dropped dramatically. Like places to shop, they've just either closed up or whatever and COVID didn't help. And we just don't have great places to shop anymore. I told Tom, we're gonna have to, we have, Macy's at the mall. We have Dillard's at the mall. We have Kohl's, which is kind of midline. Sears is gone long ago. Um, Penny's is terrible. I don't even include it in my options anymore. Because, you know, they cheapened their, their line quite a long time ago. Even Fred Meyer, you could get some good name brands there for a long time, but now they've, over the last few years, They've cheapened down their line too, so it's not even quality stuff that you're wearing. They got rid of all the good brands that they were carrying. They would carry Levi and they would carry um, Gloria. Well, they still carry Gloria Vanderbilt, I think. Oh, that's pretty. That's nice and soft. That's really pretty. So I'm kind of just trying to cover up all the intersections of these seams and things and where different things all come together in the same spot. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> this does, I think, say on it that it's the glue gun in a bottle, and it's true. It's got all the strings to prove it. I saw that somewhere. Anyway, <laughs> don't see it there right now, but I'm not gonna waste time looking for it. So, like, this would be a good place for this giant yo-yo, but I think I want to sew first before I add that and glue that down. And then, oh, another doily from Dear Daughter's dress. Shorts. Actually, this came off a pair of shorts. It was all these doilies, and then after it got a snag, I sat and cut them all apart. You guys proud of me? <laughs> that might be too big. I might have covered this up as much as I can. I don't know. I don't 
don't see a lot of places to put more stuff right now. Let's see. Could run that along there maybe. Okay, so I'm gonna take a break and sew this and then we'll be back to see how it turned out. Right after I pick this glue off my finger. Whew, okay, that was kind of wild. <laughs> it's a lot harder than it looks to just do crazy stitching all over the place like this. I felt a little bit out of control, like you're gonna have to dub me the haphazard crafter. I was going wild and felt kind of like freewheeling in a parking lot, you know? Like <laughs> when, you, when you make the car slide on ice on purpose. It looks kind of cool on the back though, doesn't it? Other than the fact that this is all worn and weird. Um, I was thinking I would try to trim it up. I don't know that I want to though. I mean, I kind of like it. It uh, The trick was just making sure that all of these little edges are down. And I suppose when I actually add it to something, I you know, when I start cutting it up and adding it to index cards or making belly bands or whatever, then I could just um, tack down whatever's sticking up. So, let's see, we wanted to put this one somewhere about there. Maybe it would have been better to sew this on, but I don't think so. That was kind of wild. I felt really out of control. <laughs> Plus, it wasn't feeding through my, through my sewing machine very well. You'd never know that I learned how to sew in 4-H based on that. Yeah. The judges would not be giving me any kind of ribbon. For that that sewing job okay yeah I, I took 4-H I learned to sew and cook in 4-H which I think I've mentioned before so that was that was worthwhile knowledge and then I took typing in high school so I think between those three things sewing cooking and typing I really think my life skills are complete <laughs> Pretty much that that'll get you through in a lot of situations won't it well I thought I wanted to add this one but I think it's too much and I don't know I don't see that there's anything else that I would glue on there if I was gonna do this ruffle I would have sewn it on so I don't know maybe that's boring maybe it's just fine but I I kind of like it just the way it looks here so we're gonna leave it at that I'm gonna wipe off my glue and cap it up. So yeah, that's how that turned out. I don't think we have enough time to do a strip because it takes time. I mean, I could get started gluing for a few minutes. It just takes time to put everything down and I could show you that other style. Let's do it on the back because this side is pretty. So that way when you turn it over, you still have something pretty to look at. Um. So now I've wiped off my glue, but I'm putting it back. <laughs> These satin pieces are really nice to go underneath. This one is discolored, so it must have come off a blanket or something. So that the other thing you want to remember is not to put too much glue if you're not if you're not used to sewing, obviously. Um, not to put too much glue down because glue and your sewing machine do not mix, especially with your needle. It will gum up your needle and then it will gum up the works. So I was going to show you how people set things down in strips, but then I wanted to place the satin ribbon, so we'll see. And I'm, I guess I'm going haphazard again. Let me start on the other end. I'll show you, show you what I was actually talking about. So sometimes they just, this one's not long enough, but they just lay it down in strips like this. And go, go down the, go down the piece, the base. You know, this thing is dripping. This piece is kind of chewed up. And let's see. Let's try this one. So this one's got a little more plaid right off the bat. I don't. This one's hard to tell right side and wrong side. I think that's the wrong side. Here 
there we go. I'll try to keep an eye on the clock. I really like this. It's like a piece of upholstery fabric. I don't know where else I would use it, so it's gonna get used here. We're throwing this away. It's okay. <laughs> if I really need it, I'll dig it out of the trash later. Yeah, oops, ooh, this one frays. away. Let's see, who else can I put on there? I like this blue, but I think I'm going to put that further down. What did I just see? What did I just see? Oh, this guy and this guy. Okay, so let's do this. This came off of a vintage pillowcase. That'll work. And then I um, coffee dyed it, so it's really grungy. Really, really grungy. I'll try to line it up on the top edge. And trim on the bottom edge, but I may end up having to go back and trim a little bit, and that's okay. This one has not got a square corner, square edge, so. Let's do that. This is another fabric, of course, from the thrift store, and I really just love the color, but man alive, it is so see-through and so flimsy. I don't know how anybody ever made an outfit out of it. I, I would not be comfortable wearing it, that's <laughs> for sure. But it sure is pretty, especially with these fall colored things. The one thing I found when I was going through my mad collaging the other night, no matter how many times you try to use up the scraps, there's always more scraps. And I think, right side or wrong side? I think we're having the same issue here. I'm trying to use up the scraps and then I'm making smaller scraps. But it does feel good to get these things used up. See where are we at? Eight minutes. Let's see. I don't know if this guy fits our aesthetic or not. It's pretty, but I don't know that it's quite right. There's that one. Oh, this is really another pretty piece. This came in some fabric pack or another also upholstery fabric and again I don't know where else I would use it except right here so and this is just the right width so this end of the strip at least will have some interesting texture to it With all of these upholstery fabrics and are you tall enough nope this is another one really thin. I don't know. Don't know what you would make out of it that you could wear that would hold up and not be too see-through. Going to overlap that fringe on that a little bit. And let's see. This one's pretty. Oh, and this one and this one. Okay. Why where does Boy, this goes a lot faster, doesn't it? The sewing would too. So I don't have fancy stitches on my machine because it's from 1983. Not computerized at all. So I would probably, not probably, I definitely will. <laughs> Just zigzag between each one of these. And then I would go around the outside edges Probably also with zigzag, only because zigzag looks looks cool. So, and then um, oh, well, where were you when I was looking for the bigger piece over here? Huh. Fine. This one's kind of cool though. Look at that. Anyway, then I would probably go around the whole thing. The two outside edges and once down the middle, also with zigzag. Not cut straight. 
No matter, we'll just put it there and it'll get covered over by the next one. I want to get to... So they're all pretty uniform and you know, this, this kind of a snippet roll has its own, its own look too. I don't know, I tend to go for the haphazard because it's kind of like putting together a puzzle, you know? Go for that wild and crazy look. So I said I was gonna line up up there, so I will. And then this one is a little bit different blue plaid than the other one that we used. Now I'm gonna run into the satin. Maybe I could still, uh, probably, I was gonna say maybe I could still make that work, but I laid them all different directions. There's that. And I really like this, but I probably need something else brown. Hmm. Oh, that's pretty, but that's not the right size. This is pretty, but it's not in a strip. There's a problem there. Oh, this is interesting. <laughs> I think this is from when Kimberly and I went to the fabric store last year. I think that's one of those snips that was in the bag. So we'll, we'll add it, why not? It's kind of in the right color scheme. And still want you, because I really love this fabric. Just love it. I think I might just cover up that satin. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm probably way off screen. I didn't even pay attention. Sorry, that was rude. I wonder if this will come off. Yep. Okay. Let's just keep going with what we're doing then. And our timer's about to run out. So there you go. This is what happens when you get going. So you just make your strip and then you can go through and add, add your pretty stuff. You know, I've got this, I really like this. I, it was gathered, so I cut it off. Cut it off so it wouldn't be ruffled anymore. You could put that like right here. I'm gonna have some gold in our autumn. I guess that's why they call it autumn gold. Here, I'm gonna have to use up that bit of glue that's falling off and then cap it. I just wiped it all off and got it all clean and then I used it again. So who's gonna go right there? Ooh, this one, you are, that's pretty. It's got a wrinkle though, that wasn't, that wasn't my smartest move. Isn't that pretty? Nice. Okay, so yeah, then we just start adding all the pretties. This is not square. I'm gonna have to square that up. And then you sew around it. So what I'll have to do is show you in the next one after I have it all put together. The next video. Now I'm moving where I had it located, that's fine. I think it shows up better here anyway. But I do like this gold, so maybe we'll just make it do that. I'm gonna run it, run it down this edge. I have plenty of it, I ordered it at one point from somewhere, so I had lots of gold for a while. I don't think you call out for gold, or you, but you might. So yeah, that's, that's how we do that. Just moving right along. Oh, and then there's this pretty one. So you just kind of cover your seams with pretty laces and pretty stitches, and then and then sew it all together. Yeah, pretty stitches, yeah. I'm not making sense anymore, so I should quit. All right, well, let me show you once again 
our beautiful square, our snippet square that we made. And then let's read our quote of the day. So I have this little um, like little booklet kind of thing, almost like a calendar, but it's not, and it's full of quotes. So today's quote is, is drawn from that booklet. It says, has quite a few good ones in it. To be without some of the things you want is an indispensable part of happiness. To be without some of the things you want is an indispensable part of happiness. In other words, you wouldn't appreciate what makes you happy if you had everything that you wanted. So you don't know that you're happy if you never want for anything. All right, Bertrand Russell, I, know, I recognize his name. I don't remember what all he did. So anyway, you can look up Bertrand Russell and find out more about him. But that is our quote for today. That was our project for today. So I'm glad I got that done. I'm going to have to do a few more. I don't necessarily have squares to do the, the um, fall ones on, but maybe I can make some more um, quilted pockets or something too. So it's the same concept. You just do it on a piece of index card, glue it down and sew around it. And um, then you have a quilted card, quilted pocket. All right, guys, that's all I have for today. So until next time, be inspired and do something creative. And I will talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.